How you doing ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I'm from IGS Electronics. Today we're going to be playing with encoders. And more specifically, we're going to be wiring encoder into our S1200 series PLC. Most, I'm not saying all, most S1200 series PLCs has at least one or two. Like in my case, I have six channels, high speed channels that I can set up in a controller to accept the signals from encoders. So before we get a crack on, uh, how's this, uh, I thought you need counting cards for this and things like that, how is this possible? To make it make it simple to understand how encoders works, if you ever work with the sensors itself, let's say, uh, let's say basic, uh, basic proximity sensor, you put the hand in front of the proximity sensor, signal goes on, you take it off, signal all goes off. Very simple, that's exactly how encoder works. There's a quite a bit of a misconception that encoders is something like crazy going on down there. No, it's a disk, like my, in my case, I got 100 pulses per revolution. So my disk in there that spins around, has got the disk with 100 holes into it and a beam of a laser going through it. As it goes past it, it goes on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. And every time it does that, it counts that as one. As long as the only the only uh, difference that uh, would be uh, between this one and a standard sensor is that your input it needs to be able to accept these signals really fast, and that's the only thing that you need for a uh, your input PLC that uh, PLC that has inputs is capable of accepting these signals fast. And Siemens has integrated. Almost all of the, again, I'm, I'm not talking about all the controllers, but all they, as far as I understand, it's all of them. They have some one or two that can be set up to uh, accept uh, input all the way down to 0 0.1 microsecond, which is sufficient enough to almost all encoders. Not all of them, but almost all of the encoders. Today, we are going to be having a look at it, how to wire it in the controller itself. How I did with, uh, with we talked about the AB. Uh, a and B uh, phases, we can talk about Z phases, and also we're going to be looking into the, the, what, what happens if I use just one phase, which is A phase, or it doesn't matter, or B, or whatever, it doesn't matter, but if I use just uh, encode as a single phase itself, you can do that as well. We're going to have a look at how that works, I have my uh, HMI screen that I have uh, prepped for us, so, uh, so we can see some values. In the next video, I'm going to show you how I programmed all this into it, how that programming ha happens within... The, the, the controller itself and how to set it all up. So de de definitely tune in for the next video for that. So how about we get started? So here we are, here is our encoder. The first thing, so let's quickly have a look at the encoder. Key aspects before we get even started, as you can see, I have a hundred uh, pulses per revolution. Key aspects before you need to start with your encoder, you understand, is your encoder PMP or NPN? Mine is NPN. It's a crucial, crucial to understand to make sure that you, you are sending back correct wires. Otherwise, your encoder's pulses will not be coming back to control. It will be coming back, but it will not be read if you are, if you are wired the inputs in here incorrectly. We're going to get to that in a minute. Most encoders are 5 volts or 5 to 24 volts or 24 volts uh, alone. Again, there's other different voltages, uh, but they are rarely used. As you can see, my brown and blue, which is coming, getting the power from here, plus and the minus are going into my uh, encoder and from there on as you can see my black is uh, phase A, my white is phase B and orange is my phase Z. What I have done in here because I, I wanted to see, I want to read this, uh, the revolutions all right? and that's what Z provides you. Every time it goes full revolution Z will come out. This class is an indexer. So uh, every time a full revolution Z will pulse. Okay, really good for RPA measurement if you wish to do so. Obviously, there's a different way to do A and B for it, but if you wish to use AZ for it, definitely be my guest. That will be classed as a single phase setup in our controller, which are going to be showing that in the next video. So, uh, having done that, as you can see, I got 100 pulses per revolution. To solve whole revolution is going to be 100 pulses. So, when it comes down to wiring, as you can see in here, the key. I try to emphasize, know your power supplies. That's the key. You must, must, must know your power supplies. So at the moment, as you can see, my 24 volts is coming in here. And so this power supply in here is going to be the master for all of this bank that will be working, whatever is going to be coming back in here. So this uh, plus and a minus 
is leaving, is going to my encoder, and as you can see in here, I am sending plus into M. Because my one is NPN, so it's sending back negative signals. Be, do, do pay attention to this PNP and NPN, negative. So I am powering the back of this bank with the plus and receiving negatives between, uh, from uh, black, uh, white and uh, brown. Negatives are coming back into, uh, into the inputs in here. And these inputs are configured in the system to work as individual counters. So I will have one counter of uh, working for a zero and one, one counter working for a two and a three, another counter working for a, um, sorry, zero to one, two and three, and one counter working for four and a five. So basically I have three counters now set up in the system so they can all, so we can all see how that works on our little HMI screen. Again, tune in, in the next video. We'll have a look at that in a depth how that's set up in the next video. So now that we understand how that works, so let's have a look how that little waveform will look on the screen when it counts. So here is our screen. So hopefully the light is not coming in too much. So there is our encoder. So I'm just gonna put that on now. Oh, ooh, don't, don't, I'm just trying to keep staying on our light. So. Let's spin it. As you can see, we're going forwards. They're all counting. As you can see, my Z is counting as one every time I do it for revolution. As you can see, A and B are counting exactly the same as I'm using just A. Okay, so I have set up, as you see, see, I set up as a counter phase, uh, so, so counter single phase and counter A and B. As you can see, the counts come up the same. So it doesn't matter. You can still use and code that they set up to A and B. You can still use it as a single phaser, just, just one cable coming back. Look what happens if I spin backwards. See, now that counter single phase, it doesn't know. It does not know uh, what's happening down there. And as you can see, my phase is uh, my phase Z is going up as well because it don't know. That's what AB is brilliant for because encoder knows uh, because of this A and B. The, the not encoder, but the the controller knows is going backwards forwards. all the science behind it guys you are able to read uh, watch out some other videos is to do with the uh, 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 phase angle the way the a and b is set up but do check out other videos look at that so i can go back with a and b i can go backwards and the controller knows i'm going backwards and forwards but with just a single phase we don't you can see but well, you can see we're going forwards uh phase uh, as you can see we have a uh, circulated 31 times now so let me let us reset the count again Back to zeros, and as you can see, when you spin, everything looks pretty good. All right. So now, what happens if, when a controller is set up to accept A and B? So let's put that on there. When a controller is already uh, accepting A and B, let's pull one of the phases out. So uh, let's take zero out. Okay, that's it. So phase has disappeared. So let's say we have a bit of a fault and something they stop counting. The first thing we want to check is phases. So there's a screen again. So I do apologize for the light. I'm going to spin the encoder right in here. As you can see, my singular is going, but A and B is not. Because A and B must see both. If it doesn't see both, it doesn't class that as a, as, as a, as a count. So you won't do it, as you can see. Nothing happening and if you if you see from the actual uh, pulsing in here see I uh, spin spin slowly usually you will see when you spin like that usually you will see these guys just constantly staying on but because it's high so I'm gonna slow it down a little bit as you can see they are pulsing okay and you will see 0 0.2 will come on in a minute once the one revolution where is it, where is it? right there you see one revolution that is my Z so one tip straight away from fault finding when you're using A and a B set up in a controller, make sure both phases are active. Another thing is, another quick tip to test them, is measuring the voltage. Okay, so let's have a look at the voltage as well. As you can see, I am putting my uh, probe into phase, uh, which one is black one? Black, black one is, black one is phase A. Okay, so I'm testing my phase A. And uh, as you remember, I am sending back negative, so the other end has to go into positive. So when encoder spins, let's let me put, try to put the. Uh, there we go. Uh, 
There we go. That's pulse on. Okay, it shows roughly about 22. That's about that's about right. 22 point uh, whatever, 62 and things like that, voltage. But when it spins, uh, you should see you should when when it's in a full spinning mode, you should see at least half the voltage of what you're sending in. So let's have a look at it. As you can see, I'm getting more or less half amount of voltage back. Okay, that's for the quick reading. Does not mean that it doesn't does that it's giving you just just a, a basic understanding that the voltage is coming back as it should do. So if I would ring, if I would spin this uh, permanently, as you can see, as it spins permanently, you will see constant 11 point, more or less 12 volts. So that should be that. It would indicate to me the voltage is coming back. If I have uh, missing signals and things like, that, we will need a solar scope for that. We're gonna check that out in possibly in the future. But just to focus a quick test. So the testing the voltage coming back is perfectly good. So uh, uh, let's quickly let me change 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 the probe around. See, make sure the A is good. Here we are. That's all set up. Let's spin it. So and have the same thing you will see. As you can see, my my uh, B phase is sending back a little bit little little bit more. But that is a fine. So here we go. That's a that's a small quick tip for quick testing of your encoder so the voltages are coming back does not mean it indicates the encoder is healthy because you could potentially have as well uh, signals missing and for that we need a, a oscilloscope and that will do ladies and gentlemen for this video hopefully it's giving you a good understanding how the encoder works and uh, how it's pretty much been uh, wired and set up and what the a b and z means and things like that but key one is to understand is there's different shapes and sizes of encoders coming out with different uh, uh, pulses per revolution and other bits that come with it but the key one in here is the encoder itself is just the center to send the pulses back on off on off on off as it goes through it so uh join me in the next video we're gonna have a look at it, how we uh, uh set this whole system what we just uh, witnessed and looked at today how we set that it's all up in a siemens controller itself and we'll have a look at what happens if your encoder uh, your input of the plc is not set up to accept high speeds and we'll have a look what really happens if that occurs thank you very much for watching hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to like and subscribe if you do like the channel and like the video i will see you next time